Hi, I'm Terry and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about olives and in specific or in particular the Olea europea subspecies africana which is the species of, of olive that we get here in South Africa. It's uh, <clears throat> excuse me, very widely distributed along the coastal areas particularly, but um, I think you'd find that most people would have at least one olive in their collection. So it's a very popular tree, uh, particularly for collecting. I don't know many people, uh, if any, that, that like to grow them from seed because it's just going to take so long, but with the amount of material that is available for collection, provided of course if you've got uh, permission, um, there is uh, such a wide variety and uh, of, of shapes and uh, ages of trees that are available um, that generally people would collect them and that's how they make their way into uh, private collections. I did a video a few weeks ago on dealing with various phases of development or stages of development um, in Japanese black pine uh, and red pine so really two needle pine um, in general and uh, some people asked me to do something similar uh, with uh, with olives. So what I'd like to do in today's uh, talk, uh, it's going to mainly be a talk. I won't be demonstrating any techniques, but I will be talking about uh, the detail in detail the techniques that are used to develop uh, olives from the uh, initial phase when you've just collected it uh, and then through to a refined tree. So this is the first tree that I'm going to be referring to. This tree is about the youngest um, in my collection. It was a tree that I had collected a couple of years ago and um, the most important uh, technique that I can uh, tell you about is during the collection process or just after it once you've brought the tree home um, I would suggest that you uh, flat cut the the trunk uh, which means that essentially you're going to have a giant cutting um, there will be no roots left of the tree um, but this is such a critical step the reason for that is because if you fail to do that step and you don't cut the roots enough uh, then it's going to be very difficult to fit it into a bonsai container um, in the years to come so make that uh, that cut right in the beginning because if you if you don't do that uh, what will happen is you'll get roots coming out of the base of the tree um, and or wherever you've cut the roots and then the tree will continue to, to, to develop from that uh, it'll obviously develop a, a canopy and then ultimately you decide you want to fit it into a smaller container but you can't because the roots are there now initially when the tree was collected it would have had a lot of energy because it was growing in the field so it had a lot of stored energy in the trunk when you cut the roots off it uses a lot of stored energy to then uh, continue to grow it obviously wants to survive and it will grow then have to cut uh, the roots drastically again the trees already used up most of those reserves and you may lose the tree if you have to make a second cut uh, or otherwise you're going to set the tree back quite tremendously it's the fact that you need to cut um, the roots very short short thinking about what what type of container you ultimately will want to fit it into. Uh, the tree is currently growing in a very small container, very shallow container. It's in 100% Akadama. Uh, the reason I do use that mix is because I'm then able to use 100% of the container because the Akadama particles allow for the roots of the olive to penetrate. If you use something like st stone or uh, a gravel or a a, even a pumice or anything that uh, along those lines um, whatever percentage you add to your mix of that is going to mean that that is what will be re reduced of the container so you'll if it's 30% uh, of your mix then 30% of the container uh, which is already going to be small um, will be further reduced by that percentage uh, initially though you're going to plant it probably into a wooden box or into an oversized uh, terracotta growing container perhaps a plastic tub although I that is not my recommendation or preference I prefer to use I find they're too flexible and could cause problems especially if you're having to move the trees around um, and so 
initially you're going to plant it into some sort of training container with a coarse uh, draining mix uh, th that will allow plenty of oxygen into the root zone and will stimulate the formation of new roots but obviously it needs to hold a certain amount of water. Then the technique that you're going to use is uh, sacrifice branches. So as you can see these branches are, have just been roughly wired into position. Now they are being allowed to just grow as long as possible and the purpose of that is to obviously once you've collected the tree you're going to have a trunk and from that trunk you're now going to want to develop your primary branches and those primary branches need to have a, a sort of a logical step from the thick trunk to the primary branch so it needs to be aesthetically pleasing you don't want to have these spindly little thin branches coming out of this very thick trunk so bear that in mind also when you are collecting uh, the, the the tree that the larger trees are going to take you that much longer to develop your structural branches on um, but this initial step of developing structural or allowing structural branches to develop will help um, these shoots that develop on the trunk after it's collected um, to to gain in girth so the initial curve close to the trunk is is all that's important you don't have to worry about the rest that can go straight actually you can if you want to you can wire it and then wire it so that it, uh, it's directed towards the sunlight um, because the, the branches will grow even stronger if, it's, if, if, it, if they're facing or, or growing towards the sun even more. Ultimately when you are done with uh, the if the sacrifice branches have done their job then of course you can prune them back down to two or three buds um, and then you can develop start developing your ramification but you're only going to make that cut on those branches uh, when the girth has uh, ha is is enough um, so that it looks in proportion and uh, to to the trunk um, on this very first phase of development of the tree uh, your primary concern is going to be to develop the structural branches and to do so you're going to use sacrifice branch technique so these branches are going to grow for possibly depending on the size of your tree uh, but at least for a year two years three years maybe four years or even longer uh, and they may grow to two three meters in length um, obviously it, it does tend to take up a lot of space when you do that uh, but it does rapidly achieve a nice thick girth at the base of those branches and then after they've you've achieved that you're going to prune that back uh, back to two or three buds or leaves so that you've got a few uh, opportunities for new dormant buds to 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 develop and uh, you would then start developing your secondary branches um, and obviously wire is still a technique that you'd use and pruning but defoliation and other such techniques is not really necessary at this point in time this is the second tree that I'd like to talk about this tree has seen a few more years in the container and so at this point in time I have now I'm now happy that the structural branches are thick enough uh, to make sense from to, to, to jump from the very thick uh, trunk uh, to to this to the primary branches that that thickness um, is it makes sense uh, you must remember that a tree in, if this was growing in the in nature it's not going to have this enormous trunk and then thin little branches coming out of it because that would never have happened naturally which which would then have developed into a, a canopy or the amount of foliage that the, that the tree would have had to have carried um, to make that to, for that trunk to make sense um, so your branches need to need to have a relative thickness uh, to the trunk and so I believe I've now achieved that um, through sacrifice branching as I explained in the previous uh, or in relation to the previous tree or in reference to the previous tree so at this point um, I'm now developing secondary branches and I'm starting to work on the ramification so when I um, this tree has now been wired on several occasions to give the branches some some movement some shape and um, when I do that I would defoliate the tree uh, but very importantly I wouldn't uh, prune the tips of the branches and I wouldn't prune off those leaves either so it's more about these leaves uh, and that's really just to make wiring uh, easier because uh, you don't want to be wiring over leaves and 
So defoliating the tree allows me to wire the tree easier to see into the structure so I can see what's happening that much easier and it will also give more light into the core of the tree which will also produce uh, further back budding or, or it will activate buds on the interior of the tree which I can then also use to to further develop the the ramification. As I mentioned for the previous phase I'm I was using pure akadama and uh, in this phase I'm also using pure akadama because this container is uh, is quite small relative to the size of the tree and I know or I am aware that uh, using such a small container does uh, slow down the growth but I also feel that uh, there is a lot to be said uh, for developing bonsai trees slowly uh, and not uh, as fast as one can uh, because it does result in more characterful bark um, on the branches and so that it doesn't look so juvenile. So I, I do like developing to, to them fairly slowly but um, in this mix of Akadama there is a tremendous amount of space uh, or there is a lot of space available for the roots and obviously the, the tree is well fertilized and watered and I also keep my trees in full sun as well. So the final tree that I would like to refer to is this Shohin sized olive which I collected a number of years ago if you're interested in reading about the process from the point of collection the treatment and then developing the primary branches all through basically the steps that I have described to you in this in this video so far um, there is a blog post on my website which you can read through and there's lots of pictures as well so you can follow it very easily um, but this tree was collected chopped again as I said and all the, the structural branches uh, were developed from nothing it was really just a trunk um, and so I used the techniques as I described them to you um, and uh, earlier this season uh, in, in spring in fact I did a video which I will link to now as well where I repotted this tree and potted it up from the container that it had been in for a few years um, into this uh, clay development container and that was really just to give it some more vitality again allow it additional uh, growing media to to develop a root system into and uh, to boost the vigor because I felt that the tree after a number of years being in a very restricted growing space had weakened and uh, the extensions of the growth that I was getting the response from the defoliation that I was getting or not getting uh, was was concerning me so I I did I followed that procedure and that is something that you will need to do from time to time on trees that have been in a restricted space for a long time is just to pot them up uh, place them in a course, uh, a mix, uh, get them a uh, lot of oxygen to the root system. Uh, you want a, a great development of roots and then this will give um, a lot of energy to the tree. And then obviously after a couple of years you can put it back into your uh, small shohin container once again. Um, but when a tree gets to this point uh, you do need to use a lot of defoliation. Um, so I typically would uh, defoliate the tree before it starts to grow in the spring and then again at some point during the year possibly in the early summer uh, or certainly when those leaves the spring leaves had hardened off properly I will then defoliate again Again. and the benefit of doing that is that you're going to get light penetrating the the canopy and at this point in time there is a fine network of branches and uh, so it's very easy for those branches to start uh, weakening and dying back because they're not getting sufficient sunlight um, so by defoliating the tree because of course this tree is not deciduous so it's going to hold on to its leaves and it doesn't just drop all of its leaves at the same time either when it does change leaves they typically change a ye yellow color and then they will start over a period of time falling off but it's already being replaced by new by new leaves um, so defoliating the tree allows uh, light into the canopy and it produces uh, if you do pruning at the same time as the defoliation uh, you're even more likely to produce uh, shoots um, on the interior so new buds will form if you don't do pruning there is still a chance that just the, the presence of sudden, you know sudden sunlight uh, entering the tree will activate those buds as well and then of course you can use those to develop 
develop um, into, uh, the, into the branches as well. Uh, at this point in time, I'm not really, I'm not using wire. I'm uh, exclusively using uh, clip and grow. So pruning um, uh, strategically. So where I know that I want a branch to form uh, into a specific area, then I would prune to a bud that faces in that direction. Um, so an olive has opposite buds, um, so you, you, you're just going to prune back really and um, you'll get two, uh, two so that the the internode or the distance from the, the preceding branch uh, in the ramification is not too long um, and of course that length is going to decrease uh, as you get closer to the profile of the tree as well. The defoliation technique is going to allow sunlight to penetrate these areas uh, that would otherwise be covered by leaves. Um, if you prune at the same time as defoliating that will uh, increase the chances of you getting little shoots developing on the interior uh, but you can also get them forming just because of the sudden uh, light intensity increase on inside the structure of the tree and uh, so <clears throat> defoliation can also help you to increase the ramification but it also helps to uh, produce uh, reduce sorry the um, the amount of dieback that you get um, you'll see that uh, trees old uh, olives uh, uh, where you've got this very dense, um, people love to, to develop these little uh, pads of foliage uh, very densely um, and, and what happens is that the interior of those pads uh, will, you'll find a, tr a lot of dead uh, twigs inside there because it, and that is because it hasn't been defoliated. And of course if you're defoliating um, you do need to fertilize uh, quite a bit so that the tree has the resources in order to, uh, uh, to push out new leaves and continue growing without being set back. I've referred to fertilizer several times in this in this video um, and the importance of fertilizer. I use um, organic fertilizer exclusively and uh, that would consist of uh, uh, combinations of liquid and solid fertilizer. With a solid fertilizer I'm using Bonsai Boost which is a product that I sell on the website and um, I always this is my little my little party trick if you're in doubt as to the uh, how well it works you can see the how how uh, happy the roots are growing up to the source of nutrients um, so it works phenomenally well and then I change the tea bag probably every two to three weeks uh, and then depending on how big a tree you would use multiples um, of tea bags for a tree of this uh, the, the shohin size tree like this uh, one to two tea bags and um, and then replacing it as I said every two weeks. And that brings us to the end of today's uh, talk, not really a demonstration or workshop anyway, <laughs> but I hope that uh, you've uh, learned something from uh, the information that I've given that'll help you to uh, work on uh, to develop your own olives and uh, I'd be very curious to know especially from um, growers in other parts of the world in America and Europe uh, where they also have olives I'd love to hear how you do uh, work on your trees that'll be very interesting for me so please do comment um, below if you haven't done so already please do like and subscribe to my channel and better yet if you wouldn't mind sharing the link uh, with your friends or local bonsai club to, uh, thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon and until then take care goodbye